Hey guys, what's up? It's 412 Sports Cards here today, coming back at you with another video. And today, I'm going to be going off some NBA buying strategies with the playoffs finally here, the bubble um, playing seeding games kind of over, that I think um, are four big strategies that can make you guys some serious money. So number one, I'm going to go over buying basketball stars who have proven track records, but haven't necessarily performed that well in the bubble. So we know that the bubble has been huge for some guys like guys like Devin Booker, for example, who have just absolutely been going off and their cards have skyrocketed. And has of guys like Luka Doncic who have proved it before and continue to prove it in the bubble. But there are guys, and I think it's important to realize that guys can slump. We're talking about eight, ga eight days here. Eight games doesn't matter a whole ton in terms of a player's career. And I think that as a lot of these players who've had a really good eight game stretch have seen their cards skyrocket, it leaves a lot of room in some of the guys who maybe haven't played as well for those eight games. First guy that comes to my mind, and he's played pretty decently, Jason Tatum. Uh, this stuff's on the top loader here, but um, Tatum's um, Prism Silver PSA 10s are up around three grand, which I think has just been dragged up by the Luka. But, um, Cards like this select rookie, I really wanted to make a video to tell you guys about this. This has ended on auction. I was watching two. I didn't buy them. Silly me. Um, two of these ended on auction yesterday for 55 bucks each. 55 bucks for this is a steal because that's what this card was going for back in like June. I think I bought this in June, maybe May. 55 bucks I bought one of these for. That's a freaking steal. If you can be getting Tatum for pre-bubble prices, he's in a good spot to make moves in the playoffs. And the select base rookies haven't gone up at all. And I think that if he starts to win playoff games, to win series, you're going to see this card get the respect it deserves. That respect's going to trickle down from Prism into this select. And I think it's a huge buy. Now, if you want to be a little bit more gutsy, um, you got a little more cash on you, Someone who has not necessarily played the best in the bubble um, is LeBron. Uh, now, be wary with this. I mean, LeBron ran up a ton before the season started. Um, I think a lot of finals hype was baked into him, but I do think his team could make it. Plus, LeBron's LeBron. Um, I think any chance you have to get on the train before it gets further out of the station with him is a smart one. And right now is certainly a moment where... Younger guys like Luca um, are outpacing LeBron in price growth by quite a bit. So um, I wouldn't mind picking up one of his right now. I think it might not be a terrible time. Uh, just be wary. You know, they did run up a lot recently. Um, yeah, the second strategy I kind of have for you guys is buying guys who you think could boom. Um, these are kind of mid-tier guys. Mid-tier guys who are on teams that you th are not necessarily the top playoff contenders that have had their cards inflated by that, but are guys that you think could make moves. Um, guys that come to mind. Bam Adebayo. Um, the Heat teams look really good. Um, I believe they're the four in the East. Um, match up with the Pacers here uh, in the playoffs. Bam is someone who's often a scorer on that Heat team. They spread the ball around a lot, which is worrisome sometimes, but if the Heat... I think the Heat are a real threat. I think the East is not as much the Bucks as people thought it was. I think it's a little bit more fragmented. I think a lot of different teams have a chance to make it. The Heat have looked really good. And Bam, I think, is someone who could be a difference maker and isn't necessarily someone who's regarded top-tier talent, like top star talent prices like Tatum. You know, he's like the number one option. Um, Bam isn't necessarily seen that way. And I think that's why it makes him kind of a value play um, this is more of a short term, in my opinion, a short term, you know, flip. Um, other guys, I mean, obviously rookie potential, but Shy Gilgis Alexander um, on the Thunder. Thunder have a first round matchup with the Rockets. Once again, I think you could invest for a long term. Also like him, you know, to kind of boom in the playoffs. That's what a lot of the playoffs is about, um, is that these guys who are like the middle tier players who boom and their markets shoot up. You only get the chance to have this much attention uh, once a year, and it's the playoffs. So I think it's a good time to own some like middle-tier guys and just hope you hit hit big on one of them. And plus, with guys like Bam and Shy, if you don't hit it, 
Um, I wouldn't feel too bad holding those either. This is a little more risky, especially since the Blazers are just in the play-in, but Gary Trent Jr., um, cool card. Um, he's been big for the Blazers, type of guy that if you saw him putting up 20 to 30, um, and he's shown a lot of potential in the bubble, that these could pop for sure. I would maybe stick more to the shy and bam, but anyways, just some ideas. Strategy number three, kind of, this is just a third point for you guys, is those, so I just told you what to be buying. Now I'm gonna tell you what I would want you to be selling. Um, I would sell off older guys, guys who are older, whose cards have run up a ton based on performance. One guy comes to mind here, Damian Lillard. Um, Damian Lillard has seen his cards kind of skyrocket. And I mean, not for unwarranted reason. I mean, Dame's been good. He just hasn't garnered a ton of hobby respect. Um, and I think his cards did deserve to go up some, but I think when you're looking at investing, first of all, the Blazers are in the play-in, so they're not guaranteed to make it that far. Um, they have to play to even, they have to win a game against the, to uh, win a game against the Grizzlies to even make it, um, to see the Lakers. Um, I don't know. I think Lillard is not necessarily... He's a little older and a little... He's a post-type player, so I don't think he has the same room for growth. And that's money I'd rather have in, um, <laughs> honestly, in Tatum Select Rookies. I mean, you could get a ton if you had a Lillard 2012 um, base prism. Not to knock Lillard, but I think those older guys don't have the ceiling that some of these younger guys have. Younger guys who've proved it mind you, is who I'd be putting it in. Think, think your Lucas, your Shies, your Tatums. Um, now, as far as what I would be um, holding, and this is really hard, I've even had trouble doing this, is I think you guys need to be disciplined in the playoffs here and hold the young guys that you believe in. Um, Shy Gilgis Alexander could fall in this category for some people. I personally am a little bit more risk adverse. The guy that comes to my mind, the only one who I would really young guy who I really want to be holding for a long, long term is Luca. I mean, the man's cards have gone berserk. We were looking for like 400 bucks for a prism, uh, PSA 10 and the, the worst when the market bottomed out in March, it's a $2,000 card right now. That's absurd growth. I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to not sell. If you guys are invested in multiple cards, I would certainly, um, hedge and, you know, get some sales, get some cash in your pockets, have something to show for it. But you guys just need to remember that this is kind of the adage that I've seen in the hobby the past year. It's that if you don't buy it now, like you regret it. Cards just seem to be going up a lot. And while at the same time, that's scary. And I would like to, you know, I would encourage you guys to hedge and um, take some profit when you can. It also means that you guys should probably be holding some of this stuff for a little longer term if you really believe in a guy like Luca. It definitely can't hurt to have some of his sitting around. Think about Giannis, if you had owned Giannis a year ago and you'd just been willing to sit on those for a little longer. Things like that come to mind. Anyways, I hope this video helped. If you guys have any other um, investment ideas or questions, just drop them in the comments. Be happy to answer. Always love to answer comments. Anyways, hope you enjoyed and catch you next time.